There's absolutely no way around this. This is going to be controversial. 133 pounds at the NCAA Wrestling Championships. Who is going to win? You got RBY, you got Seth Gross, you got Sebastian Rivera. You have so many tough guys fending for a spot. Who is going to win the title? We're going weight by weight, discussing who would have won the NCAA Wrestling Championships had they happened. So let's start talking about 133 pounds. <laughs> What's going on wrestling fans? My name is Josiah and welcome to Fanco Wrestling and we're going through this series of NCAA wrestling predictions what would have happened this year and right now we're at 133 pounds. I hope you're pumped for this because I sure as heck am. Now as always we're starting at the quarterfinals in the blood round just because there's just way too many spots to go down. This would be an hour-long video if I had done that. So, without further ado, let's get into this bracket. Starting with the quarterfinals matchup, number one. And uh, I will discuss some of the upsets, some of the things that are here, some of the guys that aren't here yet uh, as I go along. So, starting off at the top, Sebastian Rivera versus Noah Gonder of Campbell. These two have wrestled this season. Rivera of Northwestern, the number one seed, Gonder of Campbell, the number nine seed. They have wrestled at Midlands, and it was actually, it was a pretty darn close match. It was an exciting match. Uh, Gondra had a couple, had a takedown on him, but Rivera ultimately got the better of him, and that's why I believe Rivera, who is, both these guys are really peaking at this time of the season, which is great to see, but I've got to give this one to Rivera, uh, just a little bit more offensive, and so Rivera moving on to the semifinals, where Gonzer moves on down, going off against Love It. So, next match, RBY versus Mickey Philippi. These two, uh, what a match this would be. They actually wrestled last year when Philippi lost a close 4-3 to decision. That was at NCAAs last year. These two don't see each other that much in competition, being from the ACC and Big Ten, respectively. Of course, Philippi of Pitt, the number four seed, and Rome Brava Young, the five seed. Some people had some gripes about whether, you know, who should get the four and five seed, whether Philippi should be seated above. Well, it really didn't matter because they're meeting up here anyway. So RBY versus, uh, versus Mickey Philippi. Mickey Philippi. Uh, is a guy who's kind of opportunistic. He'll, he'll, he'll be able to score off of attacks whenever he's given the opportunity. But I believe RBY is just a little bit too aggressive. It has a little bit better of a pace. And that's why I have to move RBY on to the semifinals. And please, as always, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below because I'm sure that we do not agree on everything. So, Philippine now moving down here to the, con uh, the consolations. Now, the next guy, the next match that we have is Chaz Tucker versus Austin DeSanto. I am, actually, I'm really excited for this one. Chaz Tucker, undefeated right now on the season. Uh, Tucker of Cornell, the number three seed. DeSanto, of course, of Iowa, the number six seed. And what a season both of these guys have had. Who would win this if they wrestled? So, Looking at this, these these guys are actually one and one against each other. They used to be in the same conference whenever Austin DeSanto was at Drexel, so they were in the EIWA together. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. So now they're facing off again. Tucker is 31-0. and uh, Actually, up until this point, he has a couple more wins since he's in the quarterfinals. But uh, his best win, and this is the only thing I have against Tucker, is his best win right now is over Sammy Alvarez, who is a great wrestler, who is a tough wrestler. But I think DeSanto just sees better competition, tough competition and has really shown that he can hang with those guys, if not beat them, looking at Seth Gross uh, for one. So who who would win this? For, th for those reasons, I have to give this to Austin DeSanto uh, beating Chaz Tucker. And please, if you are a Cornell fan, leave a comment below if you disagree with me. Uh, so that's why Tucker now moves down here to face off against Montori Bridges in the contest. And we'll get to those in just a minute. In the last quarterfinal matchup, Sammy Alvarez, the guy I just mentioned of Rutgers, the number 10 seed. Uh, Alvarez upset Petrowski in the sound, er, er, in the round before uh, with a, just because um, Alvarez, even though he did lose to Petrowski before at Big Tens, I believe that this is a match you can switch around and end up winning and moving on to the uh, to the quarterfinals. But, however, I do not think he's going to advance past that just because Gross is a guy, I mean, he's he can attack, he's defensive, he can score from anywhere. He's somebody who has shown that he is a 
in contention for a number one seed, uh, although we didn't get it, obviously, because of Big Tens. But I would have to say that Gross is moving on to the semifinals, which leaves on all Big Ten semifinal, which, you know, maybe it surprised you, maybe it doesn't. I mean, this is just a very, very tough weight. Moving down, of course, Alvarez is moving down here. And a couple of the other things I want to mention is some of the other early round matchups that were pretty tight, pretty exciting. Tucker over Lovett, uh, Ridge Lovett of Nebraska. Lovett is somebody who impressed me at the Big Ten tournament. Uh, Nebraska just as a whole impressed me, and I think Lovett is somebody to watch out for down here as we move into the concies. Uh Gonzer moving on into the quarters was over Montoya Bridges, who we had a match, close match with early on this season. Uh, and them being the, you know, Eight or the uh, eight and nine seed. I think those type of matches can really go either way. So, anyways, moving on down here now to the wrestlebacks, on to the blood round, the most exciting round of wrestling. First up is Travis Petrowski of Illinois versus Mickey Philippi. Uh, first of all, these two have wrestled before. Philippi won in sudden victory back in November. Philippi has had an impressive season. ACC champion, of course. And with a 25-1 and record coming into the NCAA tournament, Philippi is a guy who I think can score on Petrowski, get those points up. Maybe he won't win massively, but he will win. And that's why I have to say Philippi is moving on. Next up is Ridge Lovett versus Noah Gonzer. Wow, this is a match I went back and forth with, back and forth with. And listen, there this these brackets I've gone back and forth with each day, and I think anything different could happen uh, on any given day in wrestling, and that's just how it is in this bracket too. But at the end of the day, I had to give it to Noah Gonzer just because uh, he has a win over Devin Turner, whereas Lovett has a loss, and Gonzer just has maybe a little bit more grit, uh, whereas Lovett right now is just a freshman, and Gonzer is, you know, he, he's a guy who really wants it, he's a senior, and that's why he, he's yet to All-American, and I think this will really put him over the edge, Gonzer's going to move on into the placing rounds. Next up is Trombley of NC State versus Sammy Alvarez. What, I mean, another exciting matchup, Trombley of NC State, uh, coming in as the number 27 seed. And up until this point, uh, some impressive victories that I had him over Tim Rooney, over Devin Turner, uh, moving up through the brackets. And I will release those full brackets for you to look at if you're interested in what exactly I had to say. So, Sammy Alvarez, I think he has better wins on the season overall. Uh, and, and you look at, you know, an Alvarez number 10 versus number 27. But, th you know, that doesn't always necessarily mean anything. But I have to give it to Alvarez here. And the last blood round is Montori Bridges versus Chaz Tucker. Tucker has two wins uh, in, in December against Montori Bridges. Both of them were decisions, however. So, you know, it, it close matches, although, uh, you know, it wasn't a massive win. It was two wins. And that's why I have to give Tucker the win here, moving on into the next round. As far as these rounds go, Philippi versus Noah Gonzer. These two uh, actually have wrestled this year. They wrestled back. In at the beginning of the season, and it was a tight one. It was a tight one with these two, uh, but ultimately Philippi had the better of him. He got the better of him, and I think that Philippi is just you know neither of these guys, he, he, neither of these guys do anything crazy uh, out of the you know out of the ordinary. Both of them just win, and so I think it's going to be a grind. But at the end of the day, I have to give this to Philippi of Pitt, and Gonzer is going to move down here now to the seventh and eighth place match becoming it still an All-American great year for both of these guys. Alvarez versus Tucker. What's going to happen with these two? This is another one where I struggled with. I really did struggle with who was going to win this. Uh, as far as these two go, listen, I, I already said it once that although Tucker does have a win over Alvarez, it was a close win, a 3-2 to two decision. Alvarez at this point has just been wrestling better and better and better competition. And that's why uh, I have to give it to, actually, Sammy Alvarez. Sammy Alvarez is going to move on. And maybe that's a surprise to you. Maybe it's not. But Tucker, you know, we've seen this happen before where guys are undefeated coming to the NCAA tournament. And they just get a couple of losses. So, Chaz Tucker now moving down here to the 7th and 8th place match. 
And then let's move up to the semifinals. What is going to happen here? This is where a lot of the controversy is going to come in. So, Sebastian Rivera versus Roman Bravo Young. The rematch from the Big Ten tournament. What can happen here? What is going to happen here? Well, the, at the Big Ten tournament, these two wrestled. It was a 7-2 decision. Uh, Sebastian Rivera really got the better of Roman Bravo Young. Now, for these two matches, please hear me out. There's there's one thing I think that's special about Penn State wrestlers in that they go back and they study film with their coaches and and that's every program you know every program studies these matches very intent, intensely uh, but as far as these guys you see you see them lose in the past come back study exactly these minute details that they do wrong you look at Roman Rovian versus Austin DeSanto putting his arm behind the back wrestling with one arm and ended up beating. DeSanto uh, twice if you want to count that one injury default and that's why I think that RBY it just went back to the room with, with his coaches study that film study exactly what he's doing wrong and it was, it's just a guy who's going to attack 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 and that's why I say he's going to beat Sebastian Rivera in the semifinals moving on into the finals and Rivera now moving down here to face off against Sammy Alvarez. And the bottom half of the bracket is DeSanto versus Seth Gross. Wow. These two wrestled three times at this point already in the season. Two times Seth Gross won. He won by close decision to a 6-3 and 6-5 were the last two meetings. The first time he lost that DeSanto was in the duel. It was 6-2. And this is now the fourth meeting between these two guys. And it's, you know... I mean, these two guys just go at it. Now, the one thing that I think that Seth Gross does better over DeSanto is he's a little bit more defensive. Whereas DeSanto comes out and attacks, 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 which I love to see. I love to watch wrestle. I, I watch him wrestle. I think that Gross is just a little bit more defensive, and that's why you know DeSanto may be able to score a couple of times, but Gross is somebody who can, like I said already, score from anywhere, score any position. He can pick up a six if he needs it, uh, just like he did against Sebastian Rivera at Midlands, and that's why I have to say Seth Gross is moving back into the NCAA Finals like he was uh, just a couple of years ago. DeSanto now falling down here to face against Philippi. Now, how would these two do? Listen, I, I think that, um, you know, Philippi made the round of 12 last year at NCAAs. I think that DeSanto, though, I, I already mentioned it, has better wins, has better quality wins, and is just a little bit more aggressive than Philippi, and that's why DeSanto is moving on into third and fourth yet again. And Philippi is now moving, er, excuse me, for the first time, he actually, DeSanto actually took fifth last year, and then Philippi's moving down here. to the 5th and 6th place match. And Alvarez versus Rivera, you know, Rivera's going to be mad. He's going to be furious that he lost. Uh, but, he, you know, he's somebody who can stay calm, cool, and collected. And I do believe that he is better uh, of a, a wrestler than Alvarez this year. And that's why I have to say Rivera is moving on to the 3rd and 4th place match. Now, as far as 3rd and 4th, uh, as far as the placing matches, let's get those out of the way before we move on to the championship match, to the NCAA Finals. First of all, for 7th and 8th, um, Gonzer versus Tucker. Uh, Tucker has a better record on the season, uh, a, a couple better quality wins than Gonzer, and that's why I'm just giving him the slight edge there. And Tucker is going to go ahead and take 7th place. Philippine Alvarez. Uh, Philippi, it, this is going to be another exciting match. Alvarez is a go-getter. He's somebody who's, you know, similar to a DeSanto where he is a go-getter, but Philippi is a guy who's able to score off of those little mistakes and has is somebody who's actually been to nationals before, a national qualifier, round of 12. Alvarez is not, and I think that does play a factor. You know, moving on into the placing rounds, moving on to those matches, Philippi is somebody who's going to want to go get it, get that higher placing. Alvarez may be a little bit more relaxed, and that's why I have to say Philippi for fifth place. For DeSanto versus Rivera, wow, this would be a match to watch. This would be a match to watch. These two going at it. Uh, oh, they haven't wrestled yet, uh, actually, this season or ever. And they're two guys, you know, Rivera, we've seen him beat the best of the best. He's beat Seth Gross. He's beat Roman Rovell Young. He's beat Spencer Lee last year when he was down at 125. Could he beat DeSanto? 
I think DeSanto is just going to have a little bit more fury in him and a little bit more attacks in him. Uh, we're going to see them get chippy. We've seen Rivera get chippy a little bit on and off the mat. I've seen it happen multiple times. So this is going to be an all-out brawl. Uh, at the end, I see DeSanto coming out on top and getting third place. For the TV match, Roman Braviong versus Seth Gross. Jeez, guys, this is a matchup if I ever did see one. The last time they wrestled, Gross won 6-5. to five, And he splatled uh, Roman Braviong at the beginning of the match, at the beginning of the period. But Roman Braviong was able to come back and attack and attack and attack. And we've seen him do that multiple times. Some He wasn't always you know shooting, but he was always pushing the pace. And that's why I think that... That's something I think he does better than Gross, although I will say Gross is more defensive. He's somebody who is able to fend off Roman Braviano's attacks, even if he is just going after him the whole time. We've seen him do it in the past. Gross, at this point, has already beat Alvarez and DeSanto. Can he beat Roman Braviano? Can he win NCAAs again? I don't think so. I think that Rome Bravi Young is going to be able to go back. You know he studied that film. You know he's studying that film uh, in between breaks, and he's going to go out there, beat Seth Gross, and become a NCAA champion. Rome Bravi Young is your national champion. Now, if you are interested in the next weight, moving on to 141 pounds, of course, you have some big dogs, Dom Demas, you have Luke Pletcher, Nick Lee. If you're interested in that, make sure that you check out these videos in the next playlist.